I am Pastor Agnes Williams of Agnes Williams Ministries. Welcome to Kingdom Connections. In Agnes Williams Ministries Kingdom Connections, our vision is to establish the Kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Our mission is to transform humanity by the renewing of their minds through the Word of God, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. You can join us every Saturday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network to discuss with you on principles enshrining the Word of God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Agnes of Agnes Williams Ministries. Once again here to discuss with you on principles enshrined in the Word of God. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace that is so great upon our lives. We thank you for another chance, O oh God, opportunity to share your word with your people. Let your Holy Spirit take over completely and let me speak what you want me to say, that the hearers will be edified and shown the right way to walk. In Jesus' name I pray thanksgiving. Amen. My topic today is godliness, godliness with contentment. Godliness with contentment. And it's taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verse 6. That scripture says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Why would God say that? Why did, why did the apostle say this? Why did Timothy say this? Because he realized, just as it today, even in those days, mankind's heart was not right with God. We were filled with greed. We were unfaithful. Even today, we are proud. We know nothing. But we wrangle with words. And from that comes envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, men who are destitute of the truth. So what they suppose that gain is godliness. He says, from such withdraw yourself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. He said, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. When someone dies, what does that person take with them to the grave? What can they claim and say, I am taking this with me into death? Nothing can be taken by mankind after death. The only thing that you can take after death is if you have salvation through Jesus Christ. You know, the scripture says we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. Job said that already in Job 1 verse 21. When Job went to his trials, he said it already. We brought nothing into this world. As a babe, we were born with nothing. Nothing, not even clothes on our skin. We were born naked. And they had to cover our nakedness. Nothing in our hands. Nothing we were born with. And just as we were born with nothing, when we die, we die with nothing. But if we die in the Lord Jesus Christ, Believing that God sent his son to die for our sins and accepting that sacrifice of that son Jesus Christ, 
when we die, we'll be leaving this earth with salvation through Jesus Christ. And we can have a place with God in a place of rest, eternity where there will not be no, no sin, no sickness, no darkness, no worries, no pain, no strife. But if we don't accept God's Son, Jesus Christ, we die in our sins, we'll be away from God in a place of torment with the devil and his cohorts and his angels. So why is we upon earth? Because we brought nothing into this world, I've never seen a baby or heard of a baby who was born with money in his or her hands. Oh yes, the parents have money, that is different. But you, everybody came out naked. Nobody came out from their mother's womb dressed in fine linens, dressed in any kind of clothes. You come out naked with nothing in your hands. And God so designed it that we die with nothing in our hands, but they clothe us, they cover us. But we take nothing with us when we die. If you look at that, what do you think? What sort of manner ought you to, in what manner ought you to live? Don't you think that there is a God who is greater than you and I, you and me? Who has more knowledge than we have? He designed the world, he designed man. Don't you think that when you die, he has a place for you? But you have to meet God's criteria. So whilst you're upon earth, oh yes, if you can have many houses and many cars, plenty land, plenty money, jewelry, gold, businesses, there is nothing wrong with having those things. But you cannot put those things in front of God. You cannot put those things before God. You cannot put those things and say, in those things is your salvation. No. Salvation for eternal life or after this life is through God, through his son Jesus Christ. So it says here, we brought nothing into the world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Have you ever seen a dead man or woman carrying out money, clothes, cars, houses, land, anything? Naked we came and naked we shall go in the sense that we have nothing in our hands. If the Bible can speak about that, if God can teach us that, what manner of people ought we to be? We should have godliness with contentment. We should be content with having food and clothes. Those that who, the Bible says, they that will be rich, they fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now, you could be rich, but you don't have to be like that. You have to use the wisdom of God to handle your riches and to deal with the riches in the right way that would please God. But usual man, usually mankind, when mankind gets riches, we think that we are bigger than God. We think we can buy everything, we can buy everybody, we can sell everybody, we can do what we can do. But we can only do thus far until God says, no more. And that's why we must, be, we must practice godliness with contentment. There's nothing wrong in being rich. Nothing wrong in having many houses. But it's the way we conduct ourselves, the way we think about these things. The way we figure that we have everything and we look down sneeringly at the other poor person. Remember the story about Lazarus and Dives in the Gospels? Lazarus was there, a poor man. 
sores, the dogs licking his sores, nothing to eat, suffering. And Dives, the rich man, had so much he never even deigned to help Lazarus. And then, the recording in scripture says that both of them died. And when they died, the angels took Lazarus up in their arms to the kingdom of God. And Dives was relegated to hell and damnation because he did not trust Almighty God. And he was there crying and asking God to send Lazarus to dip some water to put in his tongue to cool him. You cannot. It is appointing the man who wants to die. After that is a judgment. That is why we must practice godliness with contentment. It says godliness with contentment is a great gain. Yes, you can have riches, but treat the riches and all that you have in the right perspective. Don't flaunt your riches in other people's face. God gave you that you can help others also. I'm not saying you're going to give them everything. But you have to share and help them because maybe God saw that you could handle riches. So he allowed you to get rich. And it's not for you to keep all to yourself. It's to help people. Because when you die, you take nothing with you. Give it for your children, your family. And there are some of them, they just squander it in two twos. Because they didn't work hard for it. So check your life today. How do you view life? How do you view material things? Are you thinking about God? Do you believe that after death there is a judgment? Do you think that this life is all that there is? No, there is life after death. God so ordained it. Death came upon earth because man sinned. And that is why God sent Jesus Christ to live, to die, to rise again, to pay the price for our redemption. You may laugh and scoff, but if you do not accept what God says in his word and base your life on the word of God, you will not understand why godliness with contentment is great gain. You can be rich. You don't have to be a pauper. But it's how you deal with your riches. Are you worshiping your riches and squandering other people? I'm not saying squander it on everybody, but you have to ask God for wisdom. If God allows you to have riches, it's because he expects you to be able to manage it properly and to help other people. You don't keep all to yourself and squander it on all sorts of evil things, all sorts of evil habits. No. You can do good things in the world. Nobody has to make a fool of you because you will be practicing. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And even though you have a lot of material things, you can use it for the glory of God and to help mankind and to elevate yourself and your family. But some people, they scoff at the poor man they will even spit on you. They have 20 million pairs of shoes and to give somebody one pair, it hurts their heart. They rather throw it in the garbage or they rather burn it. But all of us have to give an account to God for the blessings he has allowed us to have. And what we have done with the material things upon this earth and how we treat our fellow men. You don't have to be a fool and give away all. But you must ask God to guide you. Give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins because you're born in sin. And talk to the Lord and say, Father, what do I do? And God will guide you by his Holy Spirit. How to disperse and how to help. Who not to help. How much to help. He helps us. Like one day a certain preacher came by me. And I said, the Lord told me to, to do something. And he expressed, people are always saying, God talking to them, but. And I said, this man is crazy. 
God will never allow any human being to die without salvation, without finding a way to show them the way of salvation, whether through a preacher, whether through their father, their mother, their brother, their sisters, a radio program, somebody in the street. No man in this earth will be able to stand before God and say, Father, I never had a chance to accept your son Jesus Christ as my savior. I never had a chance to serve you in spirit and in truth. No man will be able to throw it in God's face. No. That is why those of you who have been made rich, you must use your gain with the glory of God and with God's advice. And if you have God in your life, the scripture says, Godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain, certain we can carry nothing out. Have you ever seen a corpse in a box carrying anything with him? His spirit has gone, but that is his body that will rot. The real person, the man, the spirit of the man, the woman, the boy, the child is still alive. Spirit never dies, but the body will rot. What can you take with your spirit? Godliness, with contentment. Those of you who are boasting, I have all of these riches. I have how many houses, how many mansions, how many cars, how much money in the bank? What can it do for you in this pandemic season? Maybe you never, we never, ex I never experienced a thing like this before. I don't know anything about the world wars. I was still young. But this pandemic season in this world, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to turn to God and be contented with what God has given you? Maybe it's time to share what God has given you with some people who I need. God will give you the wisdom how to share. But mankind thinks that he is in charge of this world and he's in charge of the world to come. But God has news for those men. The world to come is not in their control. It is appointed unto men once to die. And after death is the judgment. He said, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. Oh, what an awesome revelation God has given to man. Job in Job 121 says the same thing. Job had so much. And then Job had nothing much. And then he realized that he was born naked and he will die naked. Every man, woman, boy or child who comes into this world We brought nothing with us. And it is certain you can carry nothing. We, didn't, we weren't even born. God, we had, we, had, we had the breath of life in us. But after we were born, we had to breathe again. We had to breathe in the air that God made that we can then start to operate as a human being upon earth. So those of you who trust in your riches and boast that you have so much and hoard it up, I'm not saying to waste it, but you've looked down with scorn on the other people who don't have. You throw away clothes, you throw away shoes, you throw away this, you throw away that, you throw away food. And there are people out there who can use them. You think it hard to help them. He says, so we brought nothing into this world. 
It is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment as they be there with be content. He said, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So even people who believe in the Lord, who have made a decision to serve the Lord, who have accepted Christ as their Savior, we have to be just as careful. Because some men started off good, and then the love of money has taken them over. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And then things start to go contrary to what God expects. But if you are a man of God, if you believe God, he says in verse 7, but thou are a man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Right? He also charged them to keep, your, keep the commandment. Think about the Lord. He says, charge those who are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but they must trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So he's encouraging those who are rich to say that they do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Hallelujah. Having riches is not a sin, it's not wrong. But it's the way you handle it. You're not supposed to be scornful of other people look down on them and figure out well, I have and they don't have. No. You have to be sympathetic, empathetic, whatever it is. You have to have empathy and sympathy. You won't let people rob you. But there is a level to which you can help people. Even those of you who have, some people have six, seven houses. They can't live in one at the same time. One is my summer vacation house for one month or one, two weeks, another one. And they have so many things. And they all some things that when they die, they take nothing with them. But God does not deny us of gain and riches. But he says, godliness with contentment is great gain. When God makes you rich and makes you have plenty, you ought to ask God for the wisdom. How do I handle this, Lord? Yes, you'll ask your financiers, but ask the Lord also. And he will tell you how to handle it. Because if God is the one who makes who allows you to get rich, not the devil. God allows you to get rich. God is in control of everything. So godliness with contentment is great gain. And it says here in verse 10 of First Timothy chapter 6, For the love of money is the root of all evil. So you're not supposed to love money. You're supposed to use money to help yourself and to help other people. Some people covet after money. And when they covet after money, some of them are from the faith. They turn away from godliness, they turn away from God. And the Bible says they pierce themselves with many sorrows. But those of you who are people of grace, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Run to thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So he exhorts us to keep this commandment and keep ourselves in the attitude of godliness with contentment. 
Don't hold everything to yourself. You can share and disperse. Sometimes you have clothes in the closet that you don't even wear. You don't even want to wear them again. You can share them out to people who need them. Give them to St. Vincent de Paul to somebody else or some of these organizations. And they can give them out to people, but we leave them there, then we throw them away. God is our Father. He cares for all of us. But we have to also care for our fellow men and treat them properly if we want to be called children of God and if we want to inherit God's kingdom when we demit this life. When each of us die, we take nothing with us. Our spirit goes and our body stays and it rots in the grave or they cremate us. So when they cremate your body and it's really good, where, where are you? Where has your spirit gone? If you trust in the Lord and practice godliness with great contentment, with contentment, you will gain eternal life and you will gain God's favor. God doesn't say he doesn't want you to be rich, but you have to know how to manage it. And you mustn't be lording it over people and keeping it and hoarding it up and, and scorning people. No. I mean, you wouldn't be a fool and give up everything. Quit, nilly, willy, willy, nilly. But God will give you wisdom how to handle your riches. So remember this topic today that godliness with contentment is great gain. Have a great day. I'm Pastor Agnes Williams wishing you godliness with contentment with great gain. I am Pastor Agnes Williams of Agnes Williams Ministries. Welcome to Kingdom Connections. The Agnes Williams Ministries Kingdom Connections, our vision is to establish the Kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Our mission is to transform humanity by the renewing of their minds through the Word of God according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. You can join us every Saturday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network to discuss with you on principles enshrined in the Word of God. We meet at the, our sanctuary in Signal Hill, Tank Road, every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and on Friday, at 6.30 p.m. for a prayer meeting where we continue to worship God and to fellowship with one another.